Let's take a trip to the great and grand city of Chicago. A beautiful city, one that's full of history, some of it fulfilling and some of it frustrating, especially if you are a Bears fan. But hey, hey, you uh, you got Caleb Williams now, so there's no more reason to complain, right? In Chicago, outfits are important. Whether we're talking about the external need to block the cold winds from the Great Lakes, or talking about the need for protection in case you're a bookie who doesn't want to get robbed. The Chicago outfit was a mainstay of the 20th century. They ran the streets the same way Sweetness was running for touchdowns. One of the reasons the outfit was able to keep their edge for so long was due to men like Francis John Schweiss, also known as Frank the German. Frank was a reliable hitman. If someone got out of line, there was a strong chance that Frank would be the one to straighten things out. First, I want to add that I didn't find much useful information about Frank when he was an adolescent. From what I could gather, though, he started off as a thief, robbing convenience stores, things like that. One story about Frank the German that kind of gives an insight of his nature involves him and his crew robbing a store and then Frank defecating on the register. It sounds like he had a penchant for stinking up the place. <laughs> he had a partner while doing his hits, and that partner was Wayne Brock, a violent ex-football player. Frank was part of the Chinatown crew, or 26th Street crew as they were also known as. Frank the German was considered a psychopath, not just clinically, but by his peers too, which is saying a lot when most of your associates have probably taken a life or two at the least. He was known to be so volatile that his peers sometimes referred to him as Hitler, which has to be one of the most unflattering things you could be called, I don't care what the circumstances are. He sounds about as nasty as his other German counterpart, sauerkraut, which is a German national dish. Though sauerkraut didn't originate in Germany, they claim it so they get the blame for it. If you bring sauerkraut to my barbecue or Sunday pasta dinner by chance, I may have a hit put out on you. Now, well, let's get back to business. So, we'll jump to 1962. Frank the German was 32 years old. That is the year that is associated with Frank's first hit, which I could not verify 100%, and I hope you respect my transparency, because I wouldn't want to give you a direct answer if it isn't verified, but we will get into that as well. After hanging around in Greek town for a while, he eventually met a young lady who went by the name Becca. Becca's family was distraught over her romance with a gangster. Tragically, their intuitions were right as she was found dead in the Chicago River with gunshot wounds soon after. Supposedly, Frankie German had told his lover about a hit he may have been involved in, which infuriated his outfit bosses, ultimately leading to the order that Frank silenced her. Well, the crime in question that Frank may have told Becca about is the death of Marilyn Monroe. See. It's alleged that Frank the German and Anthony Spilatro were ordered to take the life of Marilyn Monroe while making it look like an overdose. There was never enough evidence to prove either side of Marilyn Monroe's death, but it's believed it was due to her intimate relationships allegedly with former President John F. Kennedy and Mafia boss Sam Momo Giancana. And this was alleged by a criminal informant, and there were never any charges related to the death. So it is hard to gauge, and I'm not going to say it was a hit, but the story does track. I, I will say that. But again, the Marilyn Monroe death attribution to the Chicago outfit has never been proven. It is a myth and theory, and only that at this point. Now, on to 1967, where Frank is believed to have info or possible involvement in the death of Alan Rosenberg, a mob associate. His body was discovered on St. Patrick's Day. It's also alleged that in June of 1967 that Frank took the life of a man named Gerald Cavelli. Gerald Cavelli used to be a part of a street crew that stole cars. Well, he was arrested and snitched on some people leading to charges for some folks. So one day in June, as Gerald was backing out of his driveway, his vehicle exploded by a car bomb that was planted by Frank the German. It was payback for being a government witness. In 1973, Frank was ordered to silence another man named Richard Kane. Richard Kane was an interesting figure. He was at one time a cop. He was an investigator for a sheriff's office. He was corrupt and got involved with many different criminal elements, usually tied to the outfit. Not only that, 
but he was very close with Sam Giancana. He aided Sam during the time when Giancana was scamming casinos. One is that he began informing on an organized theft ring he was a part of with outfit capo Marshall Caifano. The other theory is that it was a retaliatory hit for the earlier death of Sam DiStefano. Either way, in December of 1973, Richard Kane was gunned down in a sandwich shop. Now, one of the worst crimes that Frank the German committed was in 1974 at the expense of Dan Seifert. Dan was an honest man who made a bad investment with a business that had mob shareholders. He sold his shares in that company and started a new business because he didn't want to be associated with criminals or the outfit. The outfit began pressuring Dan because they wanted in on his new business and that forced Dan to go to law enforcement and cooperate. Tragically, on September 27th of 1974, Dan and his family went to his place of business early in the morning. Shortly after their arrival, masked gunmen came and forced Dan's wife and son into a room before shooting Dan. Dan was stumbling while trying to escape the killers, and that's when his wife saw him then get executed by a masked man with a shotgun up close. What a horrific crime, man. Especially with his family basically in view there, too. That's some animal stuff right there. It is just pure and simple. All because this guy didn't want to get shaken down? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that one. In 1975, it's also alleged he received orders to hit a man named Carlo De Vivo. In the summer of 76, boss of the outfit Anthony Accardo personally ordered Frankie German and another killer named Vincent Encero to drop off a fellow mobster named Johnny Rosselli. Handsome Johnny Rosselli was hit because it was found out he was keeping more than his share of profits from his rackets in the Midwest and the West Coast. Also in 1976, Frank was charged and then acquitted of breaking into a Wells Fargo. Then fellow hitman Charles Nicoletto followed by James Cachuara were Frankie German's next victims, both losing their life to Frankie over the next couple of years. By 1979, Frankie wasn't just a contract killer for the outfit. He was a full-blown extortionist going after both restaurants and adult film video shops. By the 1980s, he had expanded into casino skimming with his partner Angelo the Hook La Pietra. In 1983, Alan Dorfman was killed. Dorfman was a Teamsters Union financial advisor that had too much information about the outfit and their dirty dealings. If you've seen Casino, then you remember Dorfman's portrayal in the movie by the great veteran actor Kevin Pollock. Soon after, Charles Chucky English was hit right between the eyes by a bullet in 1985 by the German hitman. It's speculated that even though Chucky English had retired from his gangster life, that he had attempted a comeback in the gambling rackets which ultimately led to his death. However, I want to also reiterate that that is also speculation. In 1986, we get another horrendous crime that was dramatically portrayed in the movie Casino as well, which was the beating deaths of brothers Anthony and Michael Spilatro. The brothers' undoing was because of their greed. Finally, in 1989, Frank the German was convicted of extortion. But that didn't stop him, as he was involved with a Chinese criminal group that he allowed to run an illegal casino out of a club he owned, which profited thousands and thousands of dollars as well. But eventually... The feds put together a monumental case called Operation Family Secrets, which was basically set up to target the higher-ups and killers in the outfit. Frank tried going on the run in 2005 before being caught in December in Kentucky. Frank the German died before his trials could finish in 2007 due to complications from cancer. Surprisingly enough, Frankie the German was never once convicted of murder. He died before he was ever put on trial for those crimes. I hope you all enjoyed this story today. I always enjoy catching a drift with the Windy City Gangsters. If you have any input or any details that I may have missed, please let me know in the comments, but please do so respectfully. Thanks for watching. Put a hit out on the like button, stick the subscribe button in the trunk, and have a wonderful rest of your day.